Melville, New York. Hello. Hello. Um, good afternoon. Uh, I'm reading a book, Life After Death, The Burden of Proof by Deepak Chopra. And I'm wondering, uh, one of the premises of the book, uh, The Burden of Proof, is, um, I guess, to prove the existence of a, a superior being, a mind, um, God. Um, and he does cite some examples um, in neuro, um, neurological research about uh, putting the mind before the brain or the brain, uh, as the brain as a controller of the mind. And I'm wondering... Uh, what do you think about uh, that, both of those philosophies? Mm -hmm. Well, the, uh, I, I don't believe that there is any uh, mind that's separate from the operation of the brain. So I think the studies that uh, look at people who, say, have near-death experiences and uh, have common accounts of what they experience as supposedly the soul leaves the body can all be explained in terms of the effects of oxygen deprivation on the brain, the kind of hallucinations that you have uh, when the visual cortex is deprived of uh, oxygen. And I don't think that any accounts of a person uh, ceasing brain function and then being revived and then being able to remember conversations that took place when there, there was no brain activity, I don't think any of those have uh, panned out. They all turn out to be uh, false reports, uh, cases where it would be very easy to reconstruct it after the fact. So um, I would have to disagree with the premise of the book. I haven't read it, but assuming that it's that mind can exist separately from brain, then I think the evidence is very strongly uh, against that. I mean, the mind can affect the brain in the sense that um, the whole operation of the entire brain, which is very densely and richly interconnected, can affect certain parts of the brain. The mind can affect the body in the sense that when I want my hand to, to raise, it, it does raise, uh, because mind in the sense of what my 100 billion neurons are doing can affect the body because the brain's connected to the spinal cord, which is connected to the hand. So I don't think that mind and brain are, or mind and body are separate in the sense of not being able to interact. But I don't think there's anything called mind that somehow floats free of the, uh, of the brain. Card